بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد و نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم If we look at the downfall of Muslim Ummah, we will find two basic reasons for this downfall. One is disunity. There is no unity in Muslim Ummah because of the reason we are fighting to each other. And instead of making, giving strength to each other, we make weak to other people. The other thing is very, very important. This is our, about our earning, halal and haram earning. When a person earns haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not listen his supplication. If a person eats haram luqma, one bite of haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not listen his supplication till 40 days. So if we don't care about our earning and we earn haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not listen our supplication. There is a very strong hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa taala definitely listens a supplication of a traveler, but a traveler travel all the way go to Allah's house, Baitullah, and holds the curtain of Kaaba and ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, "Oh Allah, grant me this, grant me this," and Allah subhanahu wa taala responds in a way. Your dress is haram, your eating is haram, so why I listen to your supplication? My respected viewers, it is very, very important. We look at our earnings. Is it a halal earning or haram earning? Actually, we have a few parameters. On those parameters, we say that this is a halal and haram. Definition of halal earning is according to the permissible way. Sharia and Sunnah allows us we earn, but sometimes due to the ignorance, we think that we earn halal, but because of ignorance, we earn haram. Today, inshallah, I'll talk about it. This topic is very important. Stay tuned with us. First, I'll discuss those factors. We feel these are very minor factors, but believe me, if we don't look at these factors. And sometimes our earning becomes haram. Number one is to fulfill your commitment. What a commitment a person has as an employee, as a trader, as a merchant, as a you know businessman, they have to they have to fulfill their commitment. Waufu bilahd in the lahda kana masula. Fulfill your commitment. Verily, you will be answerable for your commitments. What happened? For example, if anybody employ you for eight hours or five hours working, and a person works only four hour, and a one hour relaxing or not doing work properly, so he earns haram. A person, he has a right to take leaves. But he makes, he takes leave, not in the make the excuses. He is well, but he says that I am sick, and he is on sick leave. So the day he says that I am sick, and he earns this is haram earning. What the commitment he has it. Even a person says that okay, I will work five hours. And he is not working five hours, five hours and take breaks without any reasons. He will be a sinful. Even a person takes a break of salah and put more time. Why he put up more time to take more time to take a layer? So this is all not allowed. It means when a person has a commitment, he has to fulfill the commitment. He has to work. 
like his own work. He sometimes whatever when we are working in any place, we do not put our full energies, full dedication. And sometimes we take breaks, though those are not allowed. We make excuses and these excuses that that time because that is a paid time. Any paid time, uh, your employer paying you, but you are not working on that time and making excuses in the shape of leaves, in the shape of breaks, in the shape of any other way. So all those earning is haram. And very important, like a pound of milk, if you drop a one, one drop of impurity, the whole pond of milk become, you know, impure. The same way, if a person earns 2,000 pound and out of those 2,000, if two pounds are haram, so these two pounds make all these two, the 2,000 pounds, the barka and blessing take away. What is a barka? When we have a haram earning, the first very important setback we have it, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away barqa of our houses. What is a barqa? Barqa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us enable to meet our needs within due resources. It is called barqa. For example, a person earns 500 pounds, but in 500 pounds, he has fulfilled all his means. This is barakah. But a person earns 5,000 pounds, there is no barakah. And by the end of the day, he cannot meet his expenses. He has to borrow money. And he is always, you know, uh, become sad and in a problem. Think about it how I got money from the others, because there is no barakan. When haram money comes, the first and very basic setback we have it, this is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away barakah from our houses, number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop listening our supplication. So how much we do supplication? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never listen. Now the problems, we face problems, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help, Allah's help is not coming because our earning is not halal. So this is a very minor, you know, factor. Some people think it's a very minor factor. But believe me, my brothers and sisters, this is a very major factor. The time you committed and you paid for that time, if you do not work on that time, if you tell your employer, for example, some, ta some sort of jobs are the task oriented jobs. You have a task and you have finished your task and you tell that I have finished my task, now I can take my break or I take my leisure time, so you can have it. But some jobs are, you have to be constantly be on your seat, on your position. You cannot leave your position and you leave your position, you leave your seat by making excuses and also you do that leaves and it is a very sad thing if a person take a leave and doing dawah of deen, he is on a sick leave and teaching Islam to other people. It is a, it is an ironic thing. So keep in your mind the commitment we have it we have to fulfill that commitment. Secondly, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not conceal, be honest all the time. Do not conceal the things all the time. You be truthful, honest, whatever. For example, <coughs> if you are a self-employed, and a person is selling any product, and if anything defect in that product, a person should have informed the customer 
this is a defect in the product. Though for example, a person says oh, this car because of this, uh, this reason I am not, uh, not having a much price for this car, but you have to tell that this is a defect in my car, this is a defect in my product. Without telling the defect to other person, if you sell anything and you get that money, this money will be haram. This one narration, once Rasulullah had some camels, among them cam camels, one camel is defective and Rasulullah said that when you sell these lot, you tell the this one, this camel is not healthy. And what happened, uh, they sold the camels and did not inform. When Rasulullah came to know, he sent a person to those who bought that camels and said that take some money to that person because we charge more. This camel is not healthy. So it is very important while a person making any deal, while person is doing any business or selling any product especially or anything you have it. For example, those people who are doing the electronic things and other things, some, some person come to you and bring anything or to and you do that and take overcharge. You cannot. If there is any defect and you do not tell any person, so your earning is not halal. On the other way, if a person is working any person's place and you have done anything wrong mistakenly, for example, you have broken anything or any, any, anything had happened, you should inform your employer. You be truthful all the time. You inform your employer, yes, I have done this one. If you would like to take my salary from there, so I will pay my, I will pay for that. If you don't inform and get the salary and put in your pocket, so you earn those things are haram things. It is very important, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuhal ladheena amanu la ta'kulu anwalakum bainakum bil baatili illa an takuna tijaratan an taradim minkum wa la taqtulu anfusakum. O people of faith, do not consume one another's wealth unjustly, but doing businesses by mutual understanding, by mutual consent. And do not kill yourself. And Allah is to you ever merciful. So we keep in our mind all the time. If I'm selling this product and this product is having any defect and I'm not informing to my customer, so I'm cheating to that per person. And this money is not halal money. And on top of that, overcharging. Some people say that it is up to me how, how much I charge and the person he, he can pay, that's why he is paying. But if a, you have to take the competitive prices, that is prices in the market. You cannot say that this product is, if a product is 50 pound, I charge 100 pound, because the other person is agreed to give me 100 pound. So I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm telling anything. There is, I tell about all the features of this product and he is happily agree to buy it. No, you cannot take the price. You have to be competitive with the market. If you overcharge, if you overcharge, so this money is not halal money for you. وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا كَتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوا مَوَّزُنُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ Woe to those people who give less. When they take a maya, they take it full. 
but when they give, give less. So, this is also another important factor. Sometime what happen? We make an agreement with that person, we will give you the products and this is a lot. We s it is written 5000 5, gram or it is if 5000 not 4000, the less in weight. So, we will be sinful. So, all the time be honest in terms of telling the any defect in terms of charging the price, in terms of weight, the weight is committed, you have to give that weight. So, in all, in a nutshell, a person should always be fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always have this feeling, inna rabbaka labil mirsad, my Lord is watching me. If this product is worth about 30 pounds and I am getting 50 pounds, so 20 pound is not, does not belong to me. Or if I am doing mixing anything or I am doing less weight, so I am earning haram. If on that day there is a very famous narration when a uh, young lady, she refused to mix water in milk. Very famous narration when Hazrat Umar anhu was roaming in night time and he heard that there was a conversation going on inside of a house and mother was saying to her daughter, mix water in the milk to increase the volume of milk. She refused. She said, no, Amir al Mu'mineen, Umar did not allow us. Mother said that Umar is not here. She said, but Allah is here. And next day, what happened? And Umar called for that lady and asked, if you give Rishta marriage of that your daughter to my son, and has Umar bin Abdul Aziz was the grandson of that lady. If that lady did not show piety on that day, we will not have, we do not have Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz was born because of the piety of that person all the time. Having a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. And when we have this fear, we will not overcharge product we will not conceal the defects of the product, we will not do the wrong promises. Sometimes what happen? People say that I will give you your uh, this product tomorrow or I will uh, this work be done tomorrow, day after tomorrow, false commitments. So, we always be fulfill our commitment. If we do not fulfill our commitment, if we conceal the false if we overcharge the product, if we take the time, layer times without telling our employer, if we have a cheating with the employer and if we get this money, this money is not halal. My respective viewers, these are very minor uh, people. We generally think that these are the minor factors, but, but believe me, these are the very, very important factors. These are very, very important factors and because of that factors, we make our earning, look at the luring of shaitan, look at the trap of shaitan. A person is working all the month, in the whole month he takes only two days break and two days break is not legal break, that is not allowed, he make an excuse and he make his earning haram because of the luring of shaitan. A person is working very hard day and night, but he sell only two or three products out of hundred products in a wrong way. So, he earn haram. A person is doing all his toil, but he does not fulfill his commitments. So, he earn the money which is the haram means. 
So these are the very, very important things we should consider about it. And we don't think about the only the, the, they are the major factors. Inshallah, in the next sitting, I will also talk about the major factors. We should consider all the time those major factors. If we do not look at those major factors as well in our earning, though we are working hard day and night, this earning is not halal. It doesn't mean a person say that, okay, look at that, I'm working so much. But if a person is working in a, in a pub, if a person is work, working selling wine, if a person involves in a haram things, though he is working so much hard, but these hours are not accepted. There are the certain boundaries. These boundaries, we have to be, we have to remain in, inside of these boundaries. If we go out of these boundaries, so our earning is not halal. So we should consider about it. I'm, I'm telling you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you thousand other good jobs. If you leave any job with this fear, I'm earning from this job, it is not halal earning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you better job for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and wisdom. Inshallah, in the next program, I will explain the major factors that make our earning haram.